Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. So everybody, we're opening a little bit differently here because if you recognize those sounds, you're really going to love this interview because uh, that was a whole bunch of guys in nitro devices revving their engines. And uh, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, somebody who's keeping this alive. Keeping it alive is absolutely right. Mm. I guess it's called the Nitro Revival. And the gentleman we're going to talk to is Steve Gibbs. He's uh, He was with the NHRA for, I don't know, 50 years, something silly like that. But <laughs> He was there years and years ago, almost when it, from the beginning. But the reason he joined the NHRA is because he had been a racing track manager prior to that. So he, he knew the, the landscape, let me put it that way. Um, he's a guy whose whole history is drag racing. Mm. And boy, you got to love it. And he loved it. He did it for so many years. And when he retired, he decided you know what, I kind of miss it. Let's get the gang back together and let's do a revival. Let's get some of the old cars and and the way it used to be. Let's put them back on a track. Let's invite our friends. And that's what Nitro Revival is. It's And it's coming up. Uh, it's only in a few weeks uh, from now. It's going to be at Irwindale Drag Strip in uh, Irwindale, California. One of the, now a new track, but one of the original drag racing tracks in Southern California. Mm. And um, Art, I don't know if you were involved in drag racing, but I can remember growing up in New York and driving out to Islip, Long Island mm. to see the drag races and people like Big Daddy Don Garlitz, who wasn't much older than I was. And uh, it, I'll tell you, drag racing, If as soon as everybody I knew, as soon as they got a car, we shouldn't have done it, but we did. We would get find that street. I know the street in Nourishell. It was Leland Avenue. And it was, was a little bit more than a quarter mile. And nobody, it was wide as hell. And nobody ever seemed to go on that street. It was dead end at both ends. Yeah, well, and, and uh, that I, was, that I, was our I grew up in Merrick and uh, next door to us was a town called Freeport. And they had demolition derby. So a totally different world of uh, vehicles. Uh, demolition okay. derby, not but, the same but, thing uh, at all. You know, it had to do with burning gasoline and and noxious fumes and all sorts of other things. But you know wow. what? You know, we're, gonna, we're not going to do a half hour of us because we've got a guy who's actually lived this. So why don't we go and say hi to Steve Gibbs? Let's bring Steve. Steve Gibbs, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, good to be here. Thank you. And also, I, Steve, you know I want to say, say that one thing that you and I both have in common is, uh, well, the term was slightly different. I know that when you were in high school and uh, your early days, you were a box boy for a, a grocery store chain, and I was a bag boy uh, for Bohack. I would go, uh, I didn't get paid, I worked for tips, and I went to the end of the counter, and I helped people pack their bags and uh, carry that to their cars. So uh, <laughs> I think we, we have a similar uh, uh, first job. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Well, I, I think the, the real common denominator is cars. Mm. Um, everybody I knew who had a car, as soon as you got a car, even before you got a car, you, you wanted to fix it up. You wanted to make it go faster. And you just, I, there's something in, um, our DNA that makes us love racing once we see a car and the smell of nitro fuel at the racetrack. That's a unique experience, just as you showed earlier, Art. Uh, the cackle of the nitro engines and the smell of that fuel. Mm. Um, there's nothing nothing quite like it. Steve, I think you were probably addicted to it very, very early because you ended up working for the NHRA for so many years. Yeah, you know, I, it, it was a rite of passage, basically, to you get, your, get your first car, uh, make your first trip out to the, the drag strip. That was one of the first places I went. We were lucky. There was a local little track uh, San Gabriel Raceway. It was just a strip of asphalt and uh, 
the flood control area in Irwindale. It's you know very close to where the current Irwindale track is. And one of the first places I went when I got my first car, 1954, and uh, you know it was just that era. A car was really a big part of your life. Uh, yep. And you could work on those cars, and you could you know buy little odds and ends. I was never a real active racer. I didn't race my car. I was a fan. Um, Started hanging out at the drag strip. Uh, sometimes I didn't have enough money to buy a ticket to get in. I think it was a dollar at the time. But uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, I was bitten by the, you know, the the drag racing thing. It's a, it's an American sport. I mean, and it's homegrown and it developed uh, really after World War II. A lot of guys came back, and you could buy a, yeah, you know, a roadster and you buy something cheap and do your own work. So it was easy. And there were a lot of tracks around. A lot of them on abandoned air scripts from World yep. War II. So yep. all, all across the country, it, it sprang sprang up and it slowly developed into an organized sport. And I was able to, you know, work my way into that and, and carved out a career um, basically from a hobby. Yeah. So I was just fortunate to be at the right time in the right place and have a background in journalism and, uh, and art, which kind of came into play. So, uh, it was just, you know, some good luck on my part and, uh, and a little preparation. Well, the original hot rods you mentioned after World War II, the original hot rods, when I grew up in the 60s, uh, guys would kill, and I, they were still available for the 32 coupes for all the all those pre-war cars that were nobody wanted anymore. You could People were happy to get rid of them. they turn them into hot rods, drop a new Ford flathead in them or whatever, and make them into hot rods. So the hot rod culture really did take off, you're right, in the 50s and the 60s. And it soon became an organized, I guess Wally Parks started the National Hot Rod Association in, in the early 50s, 52, 53, something like that. Right. And you joined, you joined what, 10 years later? Well, a little bit later. I mean, I Wally's ahead of me a few years, you know, but he started the, he was the original editor of Hot Rod Magazine. He started right. working Hot Rod when it came out in 1948, and then he started the National Hot Rod Association in 1951. And originally, it was more to do with car clubs, more to do with getting people off the streets on onto you know racetracks. I mean, face the same problem today. I mean, it, it's still out there. But sure. that was Wally's original motive. It wasn't to create a a big professional motorsports. It was a basically just to make it safer and uh, some organizations, some safety rules. And that's how the NHRA got started. And over time, it morphed into a big, um, you know, professional racing association. Right. But, um, I, I don't want, I don't want us to lose a, a fact, a side of the fact that, um, th that uh, most of the drag racing that I saw was actually on television in the sixties and the seventies. And it was like a, a prize fighting. It was actually a pretty big event. And I used to watch them all the time. And I had uh, uh, a fraternity brother who uh, uh, had a street uh, a production car, I think it was a Plymouth at the time, and he would just re add things to the engine. And every weekend he'd go out to drag strip someplace and race. I mean, that was, he'd race other streets as well. Well, Art, the, the guy who ran those competitions mm -hmm. is sitting right now in between us. Right. So electronically, so, so one thing I don't want to lose sight of is uh, I want to talk a little bit about this revival uh, that you're doing, uh, how it came about, and what people can expect if they can get to. Uh, well, actually, if they see this before November fifth and sixth of twenty twenty two, they can go over to Ir Irwindale, which is just a, a a short distance from Pasadena, in case somebody has to figure out where things are. But what can they expect when they uh, show up? at your revival? Well, it's a combination of things. You know, after putting in 50 years on the NHRA, uh, seeing a combination of running the big events and uh, establishing the museum and other events, uh, it it's, it's a combination of a reunion and a, a social event and some racing and, and a car show. And it's all the elements of that went into hot rodding and drag racing. And um, it's just a chance for the guys to get back together. And there's a lot of gray hair out there. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are still kicking. It's, it's a chance to get together. Um, sometimes the last time. I mean, last year, and you get kind of melancholy over this, but uh, there was guys at our last event last year that are not there this year. And we know that's going to be the case again. So 
it's there's some sentimental background to it too. But we're we're just grabbing the opportunity to get together to you know embrace and the fond memories we had of the sport that we were all involved in and a chance for the, a lot of those guys to bring their families and their kids and grandkids uh, to introduce them to what it used to be like. Uh, and uh, it, it's a it's a feel good event. And, uh, you know, this is our fifth one. We've uh, we started it in 2017. My daughter and I, we COVID kind of canceled out a couple of them, but uh, we've got a great venue. Uh, uh, you know, it, all elements of cars. We got street driven cars. We got full blown race cars. We got 70 restored nitro burning dragsters from the 50s and 60s and 70s. And we don't race those cars. They're they're not uh, they're not raceable anymore. But we start them. We start the engines. We push start them. Uh, make a nice presentation. Uh, it's a little niche event, but. Um, but we enjoy doing it, and we've got a good following, and uh, God, we welcome everybody. If you want to kind of recapture what it was like in that era, uh, Urbandale Drag Strip, uh, November 5th and 6th. Uh, it's about 20 miles east of Los Angeles, uh, uh, right adjacent to the 605 freeway. So um, come join us. Yeah. yeah. It, you know what, uh, Steve? It, you, I think you've captured uh, a, a key idea a key element of drag racing. And that is, I remember going to the track and it was like a big party. Mm. It was the pits. Guys would drive their cars and they, you'd walk around the pits looking at other people who brought their cars to race. And you, everybody just met each other, became friendly. Tell us about your car, that kind of thing. Then, of course, years later, it, the professionals came in racing for big bucks and you know that's pretty spectacular stuff. That's when the the nitro engines really started taking off, and that's what you I think one of the important things that your nitro revival offers people is that you can see these cars the way they were, um, the early nitro rail cars, the the dragsters, and even I think you'll probably get a funny car or two, won't you? Oh yeah, we got a half a dozen funny cars out there, then the fuel roadsters, and different categories of cars. Mostly the front engine fuel dragsters, but you know, over time they evolved, and most of the guys at first did their own work. And yeah. slowly but surely, the speed equipment industry established, and you had guys specializing in certain. One guy did superchargers, and another did cylinder heads, and another guy ground camshafts. So uh, camshafts, we got a fellow coming out there named Ed Iskandarian, who is a living legend. He's 101 years old. Oh my lord! He started. Hey. Iskandari, the Isky Cams, right? Isky Cams. He started the company right after World War II. He's still active. He's sharp as a tack. He'll be out signing autographs. Uh, Steve, it's amazing that Ed Iskandarian is still around. God bless him. I, I would love to meet this guy. At 101, and he created Isky Cams. Yeah, he, he still he still runs the company. His sons run it. Uh, hell, his sons are in their eighties. You know, it's uh, it's um, it's an amazing individual. And he's uh, I mean, he called me the other day. He said you need to do two of these a year. I, you know, one's not enough. And he wants the date for next year's event so he can. Get <laughs> well, speak, speaking of which, speaking of which, and by the way, uh, uh, John, uh, when we publish uh, this uh, video, let's put a link to a. Amazing motor trend uh, write up about Steve uh, that I've read several times. It's just a, it's a great retrospective of all the things that you've done and been involved in since your earliest days. But um, uh, revival is a great term. And I understand you made this a family business. And uh, Cindy, uh, your daughter Cindy, is that correct, is deeply involved with you. And can we expect that uh, this has a long horizon? Well, yeah, my daughter, she, my oldest daughter, luckily I get three great daughters, but you know, the oldest one, she was always just captivated by, by racing. I mean, she grew up around it from yeah. when she was a tiny little girl and, and she just loves it. And um, so she's doing the heavy moving and shaking right now. And I, you know, I, I'm pretty active for 82. Uh, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon, but I, I truly feel like she'll be running with this ball for some time to come. And um, it was a great loyal following, and um, so yeah, my daughter, she's uh, she's my secret weapon. But 
not so secret actually. <laughs> Great, I, uh, Steve. I want to go back to the, uh, the some of the famous names you men uh, mentioned, Ed Iskandarian, but. You've got a lot of uh, famous racers, retired racers, who come out and sign autographs. Am oh, I correct? Oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll have an autograph session on Saturday the 5th at 1 o'clock. And um, we've got a big tent. It's our welcome tent that the McLennan Foundation sponsors for us. Um, and Jim McLennan is the founder of that. He's a Hall of Fame member. And his son, Bobby, will be there with uh, one of their race cars. But we'll get over 40 Hall of Fame, the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame, which is amazing, is out of Don Garlitz Museum in Florida. We got already 40 members of the Hall of Fame will be there signing autographs. I'm talking, you know, Don Perdome, Tommy Ivo, Linda Vaughn, uh, Marvin Graham, uh, Kelly Brown. I mean, I go down the list of names, uh, in, let's say over 40 of them, uh, and, you know, legends within the sport. And it, so it's, again, it's a, it's a combination of a social event where you can get out and actually talk to these folks. You know, yeah. they're, they're going to be hanging out all weekend. And then that's one thing about drag racing. The stars have always been uh, available to the public. They're not behind, you know, some fans, uh, you know, like at some of the other real up and, you know, wine and cheese motorsports, I'll call it. You know, the <laughs> yeah. are down, you know, beer and hot dogs. And, and, but they've established themselves as uh, legendary folks. Tommy Ivo, uh, TV Tommy Ivo started out as a TV star when he was uh, eight years old, okay? And he's still out there, 86 years old, 87, I think he is now, loves to mingle with the crowd. And uh, he'll be there to, to visit with the folks and sign autographs. And, uh, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Over 40 uh, Hall of Fame members. Yeah, I, I think that's amazing. That. That alone is a draw, but also to see these cars uh, fire up, to see these uh, front engine dragsters uh, fire up like they did, and uh, you, you call it a cackle fest, am I correct? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a funny term, but, you know, but in drag race uh, terminology, when you start an engine forever, they said, we're going to cackle the motor. I mean, who knows where that term came from, but that's just what you say, we're going to fire this baby up, we're going to cackle it. And when we did one of these events in 2000 at Bakersfield, uh, we assembled eight cars and fired them up all at the same time. And a fellow named Greg Sharp, who's a curator of the NHRA Museum, said, we'll have a regular cackle fest. And the name stuck. But there's been, since that time, we've had over 300 of these cars around the country resurrected, restored, replicated. Um, and, you know, like I say, we'll have at least 70 of them at Irwindale with some really historic cars. Don Garland himself will not be there, but one of his cars will be. One of the cars he raced in the early 60s will be at Irwindale uh, with the owner, a fellow named Sonny Messner, who is a Hall of Fame member now. Um, and you'll see it and hear it and smell it and feel it. And uh, and we've just got all sorts of those cars out there uh, coming from all over the country. We've got cars coming from Canada, we've got cars coming from back east. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's it's taken on a pretty big role here within the sport. Now, you mentioned um, that they're not racing, they're not in competition, but you will do, you will have uh, exhibition runs on the track. Am I correct? Oh, yeah, yeah there, there will be exhibition runs. We've got you know, cars in different categories. Uh, yep. School gassers, we call them. You know, the modified boots and sedans. <laughs> uh, all there's dragsters. There'll be some more current dragsters going down the track, current funny cars that meet current safety regulations. Mm. Uh, so, no, they'll be making exhibition runs down the 8th Mile Irwindale track. But these restored cackle cars, we can't race them because they don't meet the current safety right. specs. But, uh, but boy, they, they sure sound good and look good. And we'll line up Saturday evening. We call it the line of fire. And we'll line these cars up all on the racetrack. And it'll take the entire eighth mile. There'll be 50 at least of these cars out there. Oh, and wow. we'll fire them up in pretty rapid order. So at any one time, there's 10, 12, 15 of them running. Wow. 
and uh, Amazing. pretty impressive show, and we'll do it right at dusk, so there's a lot of fire coming out the headers and other nitro <laughs> with the air, yeah. all the car alarms going all over, you know, <laughs> um, and uh, the fireworks salute at the end, so it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular. Uh, by, by the way, I noticed um, uh, when I uh, was checking out location directions for um, uh, Irwindale uh, for where the uh, drag strip is, uh, obviously it's part of the complex of the Speedway. Uh, and is Lucas Oil still there? I, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I don't know what their sponsor arrangements are with the track. Mm -hmm. That would be a track situation. But uh, we've got a sponsorship from Redline Oil that sponsors our individual mm -hmm. events. Had some support, but you know, okay. this is a huge supporter of motorsports, and my hats yeah. off to them for all they've done to, you know, boost uh, drag racing around the country. So, can we expect In and Out Burgers to be there? Well, they'll be there Friday. Okay, uh, we, we call it our <laughs> welcome night, and it's open to the public. It's not a ticketed night, but um, they'll be out there at six o'clock on Friday and serving burgers. Uh, you know, for ten bucks, you can get a an In and Out meal with a drink and. I don't think they serve fries with the truck. It's, it's, it's in and out. The, re well, the reason I brought it up is that it's a, it's a, a, obviously a Southern California institution, but your history uh, goes back with uh, 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 one of the uh, original in and out people who ran a meat market. And uh, so you have just this interesting, wonderful story. I, I urge everybody to go read the Motor Trend uh, uh, story uh, piece on you. Uh, but the the people that you met, the people that you just because you love the sport and you found a living out of it, and it's really amazing and it's wonderful that you continue this as uh, uh, in, into your second and third act, and with your uh, daughter Cindy and others, maybe fourth, fifth, and sixth acts to keep this going because it's something that's fading away. I don't expect uh, there to be Tesla dragsters uh, out there anytime soon, uh, unless they can get a good stereo system to. Uh, come up with some noise to make it sound exciting. Uh, so uh, this is this is something that's historical. It's uh, in many ways like people who keep stagecoaches around and and give rides. You know, from that era, a lot of the stuff's disappearing. And the fact that you're hoping to keep it alive and and have a whole new generation of people uh, come down and see what this was all about, I think is well, wonderful. Steve, before we go, I want to I want to mention the uh, car show aspect of your event because i know you've got um uh one of the classic one of the original car clubs of southern california um if not sponsoring certainly organizing a car show is that correct on the, as part of the event yeah it's, it's again one of the elements of the event we call it a hot rod hangout it's just you know basically a, a place for the we call it show and shine or a street rod gathering but they're you know uh, basically street uh, driven hot rods that guys have classics it might be roadsters it might be custom cars muscle cars we uh, we keep it limited to 73 and earlier cars uh, and there'll be a couple hundred of those cars there just driven in by hot rodders and yeah. it's uh, organized uh, our host club we call it it's the uh, road kings of um, burbank really a yeah. legendary car club which again tommy ivo don perdome some big name drag racers came out of the road kings and they're still very, very active today. And um, they just celebrated their 70th um, anniversary. And there's some original members uh, still in the club. So, it's, you know, these guys are still out there actively uh, loving the hot rod culture. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's one part of the, uh, the overall Nitro Revival experience is the, uh, you know, hot rod hangout with the Road Kings as the host club. Sure, and mm -hmm. seeing some of those street rods, you know, they're creative works of art. But uh, yeah, and you know, I guess there's no limit to how much money you know someone can spend on these things. <laughs> the, the bulk of our cars are street driven; they're not trailer queens, you right. know. That you, you'd right. see a typical car show with you know, uh, I mean, an indoor really professional car show. There's car shows every week here in Southern California that kind of taken the place of the drag racing activity is you know if you can't drag race at least the old guys with hot rods there's a 
<laughs> There's a group nearby, they call them the Donut Derelicts. I mean, for 30 years now, <laughs> every morning, uh, you got to get there at 530 to get a spot, you know, right. and there'll be 150, 200 cars gather up and at 730, everybody leaves. Yep. But, uh, you know, the love of cars, the love of hot rods, it's still out there. And, and there's a lot of younger guys out there, too, wishing they had lived in the era we lived in. I mean, yeah, wish, wishing they could find a 32 coupe. Oh, uh, unbelievable. You know, cars are just <laughs> junk for $25 now. Uh, a steel-bodied 41 Willys. Uh, I mean, if you can even find one, you're talking right. money. And they used to be, you know, a dime a dozen. But that's just the way things go. But uh, no, we're lucky uh, to still be doing what we do and having a good loyal following, and um, you know, just thankful that uh, still. Well, still you you picked a here, you know you, you picked a great place. Irwindale Speedway is a beautiful facility. It's brand I I call it brand new. It was new in 2000, I think it was. Right. Um, but it's it's not far from the original uh, historic Irwindale. Uh, drag strip um, so um, it's got it's got the new bones but it's got the history behind it so it's a great location beautiful facility plenty of room um, and easy to get into uh, so I hope people show up yeah I know also uh, um, uh, we're, we're going to provide all the information so that if people somehow miss getting to the Nitro 22 uh, annual event uh, perhaps uh, with a little bit of encouragement, uh, you and Cindy and others can make it a semi-annual event and uh, people can catch up with it more often. So in any way, thank you for keeping uh, this important part of our history uh, alive and letting people who are nostalgic for it see it again. But also, uh, I'm sure there are lots of little kids that wind up coming along with their their grandparents uh, and perhaps great grandparents and get uh, exposed to this uh, great part of Americana, which uh, you're helping to keep alive. Well, we appreciate that. That's that's our goal. We, we don't do this for a living, my daughter and I. This is a, it's a you know for the love of it to keep it going. We have to pay the bills, but we try to keep prices reasonable and uh, make it an enjoyable event. And uh, we intend on at least doing it once a year, and and. Who knows where it may go from there, but uh, it's uh, we're just paying tribute and paying you know respect to uh, the sport that we came out of, and that's about it. Pretty simple stuff. Yep. yep, and and it's a lot of fun, great people sport. Steve, I'm looking forward to uh, to being there in Irwindale in February. Uh, for, not February. November. Pardon. Don't come in February. <laughs> oh, well, the John's going to go February because he thinks it's a lower price. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's that's my old age. I'll, I'll miss the event if I do that. Well, believe me, I understand that. But uh, now we'll be out there November uh, 4th is set up day. That's the Friday night. The internet can be out there. So you want to come by and grab a burger with us. Actually, Friday evening, too, to take a second. We're going to have a, a memorial service out there Friday evening for the late Dave McClelland, who was a oh, yeah. known announcer for the early television. Uh, you you know, bet. The, the, yeah, Big Mac. And, uh, for Bill Schultz, Mac, yeah, Big Mac, we called him. He was a great guy. And uh, yeah. so we're going to have a, a memorial party for him. But then the, the event Saturday, uh, November 5th, is really, that's the main day. Sunday is also a great day. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's in, in essence, a three-day event. But, uh, you know, uh, tickets are on sale at the gate. So if you don't get one in advance, no problem. Come on out. And uh, it's easy to get to right off the 605 freeway north of the Interstate 10. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, thank and uh, I hope everybody shows up. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us at the Celebrating Act 2 audience, and uh, uh, we hope a lot of uh, people show up uh, because of this, and if not, every year, uh, just uh, check them out. It'll be Nitro 2023 and 24 and 25, and... and <laughs> Let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves. Well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting ready to... Uh, what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to get Steve to come back uh, next year, and tell us about 2022 and what to expect for 2023. So anyway, thank you, Steve. And thank you, nightforrevival.com, if you want to find out what we're doing. Okay, great. Good deal. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, 
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.